Hi everybody, Rick Poljan with M Heart Fastening Technologies. Along with our distributor, High Tech Fasteners, we're developing a series of how-to videos on how best to set up and maintain your new pop rivet tool. In our out-of-the-box video, we discussed a 2500 tool set up for a 3 16 diameter rivet as it comes set up. In this video, we're going to show you how to convert it from a 3 16 diameter tool to a 1 8 diameter rivet tool. Uh, as we discussed earlier, very important, we discussed this small bag of components. This is where those components become important. So we're going to step through and, and show you individually what those components are now. The components in this small plastic bag are very important when you convert sizes of the tool. So I'm just going to take them out here and then lay them out on the paper so that you can see what they are. We have a long mandrel guide tube and jaw pusher. You'll see when I tuck this tool apart, that for the 3 16 diameter rivet, this small portion of the jaw pusher is all that's in the tool currently. When we go to the 1 8 diameter rivets, we require a long mandrel guide tube so that mandrels don't shingle up inside the tool and jam up. It's very important that when you switch over from 3 16 diameter rivets to 1 8 diameter rivets, this part is installed in the tool. Then also in the bag, you have two different nose pieces, a 1 8 diameter nose piece and a 532nd diameter nose piece. These two nose pieces, we'll, we'll go through how to change those out also. Just going to set those components off to the side right now. The tool, uh, 2500 tool, is designed so that you're able to do basic maintenance and cleaning of the jaws on this tool without any tools required. And actually, the changeover to different size rivets only requires a minimal amount of tool usage. First step of the process, I'd like to just pop off the mandrel collection canister and set that off to the side. It's really not needed for this uh, stage of the process and it just gets in the way a little bit. You have a gray collar here that is a hand tightened collar with an o-ring inside that prevents it from loosening up. I'm going to loosen up that collar on the tool and remove the nose housing of the tool. Again, you'll see it's very simple without any tools required. The nose housing is now off of the tool. Here inside this portion is the, the, these jaws, the small gray portion that sticks out in the end is the actual part that grabs the rivet nail and pulls it back during the setting operation. It's inside of a jaw housing, which in this particular tool is set up with a spring activated collar. So this collar moves back and forth under a spring force. I disengage that collar by pulling it back out of a set of ears in the jaw housing. It's going to allow me to, to loosen this up by hand. A uh, very handy feature when you go into uh, maintenance of the tool and to clean the jaws. As I take that apart, you're going to feel a little bit of spring force. That spring force is holding those jaws all the way forward in the nose housing. Uh, allowing them to, to, to be tight in the tool assembly and also allowing them to push against the front of the nose piece to open up the jaws. I'm going to take that part and set it off to the side. Sometimes if these jaws are not greased properly, they'll fall out of the tool. So you really want a little bit of grease on there that helps the jaws to stay into the tool. Next step is I remove the jaw, jaw pusher. Again, that small part, and you'll see the difference here between the jaw pusher for the 3 16 diameter rivet and the jaw pusher for the 1 8 diameter rivets. The 1 8 diameter rivets has the long mandrel guide tube as we discussed to prevent the, the rivet nails from shingling in the assembly. So I'm going to set that piece off to the side. I'm going to install the long mandrel guide tube and jaw pusher into the tool. Uh, there's a hole down inside of there that you'll, you'll have to feel to make sure it enters correctly. You want to make sure that when this tool is put back in place and the jaw pusher is in place that you can feel the spring force and have that move back and forth freely. If not, there's some type of obstruction in the tool that's preventing that from happening. Next step is I'm going to reinstall the, the jaws in the jaw housing. Again, it, uh, you're fighting a little bit of spring force here as you put it together, so what I like to do is, is try to have the line cor uh, uh, correctly. And you'll notice that as you turn it on, its spring force is fighting against me, but I'll feel it start. You want to make sure that it screws on freely. You don't want to cross-thread that part onto the assembly. I'm going to screw it down until I just start to engage the, the ears on this spring collar. You hear, I don't know if you could hear the click, but there's a slight click as you engage it. I'm going to go one more click past it. I pull the collar back just a little bit, rotate it until I hear a click. So now that's clicked in place and in, in solid. One mistake a lot of people make, they'll pull this collar all the way back and tighten the assembly all the way down tight. When you tighten that down tightly, it doesn't allow for the jaws to travel back and forth correctly and the jaws won't open up and release the nail. So you really make sure you don't tighten that all the way down. So, so again, it's tighten it down to you hear it click once real lightly, pull the collar back, rotate it until I hear a, a more audible click, and you, you will actually be able to see that the ears from this collar are engaged into the jaw housing itself. 
There, it's properly set up now. So now the tool is converted over from 3 16 diameter to 1 8 diameter rivets from the standpoint of the long mandrel guide tube. The last piece to change is the nose piece in the tool. This nose piece comes out of the box for 3 16 diameter rivets. So I'll grab a wrench and break that free. Sometimes it's really tight to break free. There are a set of wrench flats on the nose housing where you can get another wrench on that if it's too tight to remove. I'm going to screw out the nose piece of the tool. I'm going to find the correct 1 8 diameter nose piece. It might be a little bit hard to see, but you can see the difference in, in hole size. Also stamped onto the nose piece of the tool is a part number itself. Part number for a 1 8 diameter nose piece is a 414. It's important to notice that that is for a standard open end rivet. There are things like closed end rivets and structural rivets out there that it require a special nose piece which can be ordered separately. I'm going to screw the nose piece into the tool. Just give it a little bit of a snug up there so it's tight and doesn't loosen up in the assembly. Reinstall the nose housing onto the tool. Again, you're going to feel some spring force there that you fight as you tighten this down. That's the front of the, the jaws pushing against the back of the nose piece, which actually causes the jaws to open up and release the mandrel. As I get down towards the bottom of the stroke, you'll see the gap. I'm actually engaging an O-ring that's around there that, that keeps the assemblies tight. I'll have to fight that a little bit. It's a little bit of a crank down, but I want to crank, crank it down all the way till it stops. I don't want to reef it and crank it down too tightly where it's going to be a problem uh, breaking it free. Last step of the process is install the mandrel collection canister. Now the tool is ready to go. Now that we completed the process, we changed the nose tip, we changed to the long mandrel guide tube and correct jaw pusher for the 1 8 diameter rivets. We're ready to test the tool. Again, turn the air supply on with the red neural piece. I've got again a smaller rivet than we looked at last time, a 1 8 diameter rivet. Install it into the tool. Again, I like to check to make sure that we're maintaining vacuum suction on the tool. I just kind of fling it back and forth a couple times to make sure that it's sucking in correctly. Pull the trigger of the tool, the rivet breaks off, which is a good sign. Uh, again, the piston stays back until I release the trigger. I release the trigger, piston comes forward. I check to confirm that the nail was collected back in the manual guide tube, which it was in this case. And just to set here, I've unhooked the air supply, and now we've successfully converted this between a 3 16 diameter rivet as it comes set up for in the box to a 1 8 diameter rivet. If you found this video helpful, consider using an MHART authorized distributor like high tech fasteners for your fastener and tooling requirements.